welcome to another Generative Components tutorial. Today, we're going to look at how to create a helix bridge structure. This is inspired by a pedestrian and a cycle bridge in my local area, designed by Arup and KI Studio. This bridge spans over a busy intersection between the M2 motorway and Delhi Road and is about 170 meters long. In this tutorial, we'll look at how to create a similar helix structure that can adapt to different variables and paths. So let's get started. Here we are in a new DGN file called pedestrianbridge.dgn. So let's change over to the computational design workflow and click on the point tool to create a base CS by clicking yes and okay. Dragging in a line node, we can change its method to by start point, direction and length. And for the start point, we can use the base CS. For the direction, we'll use the base CS dot X direction and for the length, I'm going to use 50,000. To make it a bit easier to see, I'll turn off the grid and change over to a wireframe view. This single line will be our setup line. We can confirm everything is working here, and later on, we'll move over the inputs to a more complex B spline curve. To start, let's drag in a coordinate system and set its method to by number along curve. Linking the curve input up to line one node. For the number, let's drag in a value node and rename that to revs, and we can set its value to 12. This will be a variable for the number of turns we have in our helix. While setting up that variable, let's drag in another value node, calling this walkway width, and let's set that value to 2000. Now for the number input on the coordinate system one node, let's use revs star 36, or revs times 36, which will give us a coordinate system for every 10 degrees of revolution. Finally, for the number method, I'll set this to parametric. After a little wait, you can now see we have a whole lot of coordinate systems. So to speed things up, let's turn off the visibility of those coordinate systems. Finally, let's click on the drop down menu and pin out the up vector input and I'll set this to base CS dot Z direction to keep all the coordinate systems oriented the same way. Next, I'll drag in another coordinate system, changing its method to by origin rotation about coordinate system. The origin will be the coordinate system we just created, coordinate system one. This will also be used for the coordinate system input. The axis will be the X axis. Now for the rotation, we can drag in another value node calling this rotation. For the input, let's use a series. So it'll be series, open brackets, zero, comma. Then we'll open brackets again and type in revs times 36, close brackets, comma, 10, and then close brackets. This will give us a value from zero to how many revs we have and then times that by 36. And we can do that in steps of 10. So that'll give us a series of rotations from zero up to 430 in this case. So I have that one wrong as I need to rotate 12 times. So it'll need to change to the 36 over to 360. Now we have 12 rotations in steps of 10 degrees. We can now turn off those nodes visibility as well. So it doesn't slow us down too much. Dragging in the line node, let's set its method to by midpoint direction and length. The midpoint will be the coordinate system two. The direction will be the coordinate system two dot Y direction. For the length, we can link that up to our walkway width. Now we have a nice looking setup for our helix. And in plan, you can really see those oscillations. To get the helix, let's drag in a B-spline curve, setting its method to by points. The point input will be the line two dot start point. And now you can see we have a helix line. We can now copy that node and change it to line two dot end point. And now we have two helixes. And we don't need to see the construction line, so we can turn off their visibility. With our helix created at the start and end points of the line, it is looking quite good, but they don't intersect as they're running in the same direction. So to create a helix in the opposite direction, let's select those nodes from a coordinate system two branch and copy and paste them below. To get the opposite direction, let's use 180 minus rotation in the coordinate system three rotation input. Now this doesn't appear to have updated, but I believe it's to do with having turned off the visibility of some of those nodes, but I could be wrong. This is an easy update though, by selecting the two B-spline curves, right clicking and selecting update node tree. This will update all the nodes in that branch. Now we can see the updated helix and it is rotating in the opposite direction. Now to make this into a structure, let's drag in a B-spline surface, changing its method to sweep rectangle along path. Path will be the B-spline curves we just created and I can click inside the dialog and then just drag over those nodes and click enter. Now for the X and Y dimensions, we can try 300 and 300. Now that might be looking a bit too thick for this scale. So let's set up a variable. So this is easy to change in the future. And we can do that directly inside the input box by typing ribbon width equals 300. And that will create a value node with the name and the value we just inputted. Now we can change the Y dimension over to that variable as well. Now, if we change that variable to say 100, the sweep sections are adjusted automatically. So let's rename this surface to helix one. For the other helix, I noted that the path traveled through all the crossing points of our helix one. And in this case, it'd be a straight line along the top and bottom and front and back. So let's set up that first and then look at rotating it. For this, I'll use a function call node to get the information filtered out to just what we need. 
If we turn on the setup lines again, we can start to look at what we can use as the base or construction geometry. Zooming in, you can see Helix 1 starts at line 2 in square brackets 0, and the first intersection point occurs at line 2 square brackets 9, and then the next intersection is at line 2 square brackets 18, and then it continues along in that spacing. So let's click on those three lines on the function call node and click yes to create our own function. I delete the void at the start and then start putting in the inputs. One will be line and I'll call that input line. The next will be an int and I'm going to call that start line. So that might be the integer of the starting point we want as we might want to start somewhere other than the beginning. Next will be another int and that'll be line step or the step between the lines we need. So now inside the curly brackets, let's start the function with what we'd like as the output. In this case, it will be a line. So we'll type line and then my line list equals open and close curly brackets and a semicolon. And that just equals an empty container for us to put our values in. Cycle through the lines, let's start a loop. So you can type four and tap tab a couple of times and it'll auto fill out that line for you. For the count, we're gonna use input line dot count with a capital C. Rather than starting at zero, let's change that over to our start line input. And for the steps, I'm gonna use I plus equals line step, which will then increment with our line step value we're going to put in the inputs. Now inside this loop, we just need to create some lines and then place them into the my line list. So starting with line, and I'm gonna call that my line, I'm gonna equal that to input line in square brackets I and semicolon. Then for the next line, we just need to go my line list dot add and then open brackets my line and close brackets and then a semicolon. Finally, we need to return something so we can return my line list and then a semicolon. Clicking apply, we can close the dialog and then link up the input line to line two, start line to zero and the line step to 18. So zooming in and expanding the list, we can see that we have a nice list that starts at zero and steps by 18. This could probably be done using an expression, but I like to use the functions. So let's drag in a B-spline curve and create the next helix line, changing its method to by points. Now, if we link up the function call one by using the dot value dot start point, we end up with a curve. Now, if we turn off the construction line so we can see the curve a bit easier, the curve, however, is not exactly what we'd like it. It oscillates between the front and back of helix one. And we really wanted it to be along one side joining up those uh, intersection points. And this is due to the lines rotating around that sort of center line. And we can actually need to change it from sort of start point to end point, alternating as the line moves along the path. To fix this, let's change the method of the B-spline curve to by function and write a function to alternate between those start points and end points of the line. Selecting the square to access the editor and starting with the word function, we can then open brackets. For the inputs, it'll be a list of lines. So we can use line and then square brackets. And let's call that input line. Then we can just close those brackets for the input. Placing an open and close curly brackets to contain our function, we can then just make some space in between those to write our function. Starting with the container for the points we need to run our curve through, we'll go point my point list equals open and close curly brackets and then semicolon. Now we can start our for loop. So typing four and tapping tab a couple of times again to complete the line, the count for this will be input line dot count with a capital C. Inside the loop, let's set up a counter and that'll be an int and I'm gonna call that current number equals I. Then let's check if this is the start of our series with an if statement. So if, and then open brackets, current number equals equals zero, and then close brackets. Then we can open a curly brackets for the if statement. So if this is the start of the line list, then we can create a point at the start point of the line. We can type in point, and then I'm gonna call that my point equals input line in square brackets i dot start point, and then semicolon. Then we need to place this point in our point list. So we go my point list dot add and then open brackets, my point in close brackets and then semicolon. We can then close the if statement and move on to checking if the point is odd or even. Let's do that with an else statement. So typing else and placing the open and close curly brackets to contain the else statement. I might just select the statement and indent this a bit so it's a bit easy to read. Now in the else statement, we can ask another if question. So if and then open brackets, current number percentage two greater than zero and then close brackets. So what the percentage means is the modulo or in simple terms, it returns the remainder if the number is divided in this case by two. So if it was an even number, the remainder would be zero. And if it was an odd number, it would be one. So in this case, the number is greater than zero. What do we want to do? So that's an odd number. So this is a simple way to check odd or even numbers. There are a few other ways to do this in generic components, but I like to use the modulo. We can now open and close some curly brackets for the if statement and I will indent this section as well, just to make it a bit easier. Now we can simply copy the section above and then paste it into this part. However, we need to change this to dot endpoint, not the start point of the line. Now, if the counter is even, 
we want to do the opposite of this. So we can use the else statement and inside some curly brackets, we can paste in that code again. Now we have all the points gathered into a list, we just need to create a B-spine curve. So after all of that, we just go B-spine curve and we'll call that my B-spine curve equals new B-spine curve, open and close brackets dot by points and then open brackets for the inputs. So we, it's going to be my point list comma. And then for the last option, let's keep that at false and then close brackets and a semicolon. Now we just need to return the B-spine and we can do that with just the return my B-spine curve and then semicolon. Now we can click apply and close the dialog. Now linking up that function call node to the inputs, we now have a straight line joining all the intersection points along that front side. To create the other three, first we can copy and paste the B-spine curve node that we just made. And if we edit the code a little, swapping over those start points and end points and vice versa, now we have a curve that goes along the other side of the helix. So to create the top and bottom, we don't need to start at the beginning. So if we turn back on those construction lines and hover over the first intersection line along the top, we can see this is line two in square brackets nine. So let's copy the function call and the two B-spine curve nodes and paste them below. We can then turn off the construction lines again. And all we need to do is just go and change the start line number in that function call to nine. And we'll have top and bottom curves completed. To make this similar to the others, let's copy the Helix 1 B-spline surface node and paste it next to the curves we just created. If we open up the editor, we can easily delete those previous curves and then we can just select all the new curves. Let's turn off those base curves, keep things nice and fast and that's a bit cleaner in the view. One item that might be nice to add to the system is to be able to change the width of the walkway so it's not consistent along the length. So to do that, let's use a law curve node. So dragging in a law curve and changing its name to walkway width curve. And there's one item to check first. If we right click on the coordinate system two, and if we add it to a watch panel, we can expand the list. And if we scroll down, we can see there's actually 432 coordinate systems. And this is important for the law curve. It is really just a graph that reads off values, set intervals. And this interval needs to cover all the coordinate system we just created. So you can read a value off for each width we would like. So with that in mind, let's double click on the law curve to access the settings. And let's change the series to series, open brackets, zero, comma, open brackets, revs, times 36, and then close brackets, and then close brackets again. With this change, you can now see that the control points line has changed, and the X value is now maxed out at 432, which is what we need. Now we can adjust the other settings. So the Y minimum to 2000, the Y maximum to 6000. Let's set the X grid spacing to 1000 and the Y grid spacing to 1000 as well. Closing the dialog, we can click on the graph to adjust the curve a bit to provide some variation along the path for the width or radius of our helix. So now we just have to link up that to our line one length, which is an easy change from walkway width to walkway width curve. And we need to do that for both lines. The update did some of the work, but if we select the curves, we can right click and say update node tree. And now you can see the dramatic change we just made to the widths. So our work is almost done, but it doesn't look much like two helixes, does it? What I noticed about the local bridge is the outer helix, which joins all the crossing points of the first helix, does a slow turn as it travels along the path. So how do we do that? After a bit of thinking, it turned out to be rather simple. So let's drag in another law curve and double click to access its settings. For the independent input, it can be the same as we had previously. So series, open brackets zero, comma, open brackets revs times 36, close brackets, and then close brackets again. For the number of the controls, it can be three. For the grid spacing, let's set that to 100. Minimum Y, let's set that up to negative 360. The maximum Y, let's set that up to 360. Now, if we close that dialog and we click on the graph, we can adjust the end to 360 and the beginning to minus 360 and the middle can be zero. And if you find the values are hard to update on the graph, you can double click on the node again. And if you change the values in the control point section, there are two values which represent each of the three control points. So we can just adjust the middle one to be zero in the Y. With that all updated, I'm gonna rename this node to twist. Now to implement this, we can open up the coordinate system two and the rotation angle, and then we can add minus twist. And then we can do the same by adding that to the coordinate system three input. So let's do a bit of cleanup by opening up the transactions tab and selecting all the transactions, right clicking and saying rebuild transactions. So this is not reversible, so it'll ask you to confirm that. With that done, we can see all the tra transactions are nicely ordered and expanded to make them a lot easier to work with. It also did us a bit of a favor by rebuilding the script and updating the geometry. Now we can start to see the inner and outer helix, but to make it a bit easier, I'll open up helix two and expand the input and change the color input to RGB open brackets 244, 118, 33, and then close brackets, which is an orange color. Now you can see the outer helix a bit easier. The inner helix is looking a bit messy with those large changes in the radiuses that we made, but it'll all be smoothed out when we place it onto a large path curve. So to do that, I created a line just in open buildings. 
and if we go over to the building design workflow, we can easily turn on that level. And if we zoom out, you can see the path I've created up here. If we switch back to the computational design workflow and select promote element, we can now click on that curve and it'll be converted over or promoted to a GC curve with all the inputs required. And we can just confirm that dialog. If we zoom out of the graph, you can see all the points and the curve it just created. Let's rename this curve to path curve, and then we can select all those point inputs and turn off their visibility. Now to place the helix onto the curve is as simple as changing the curve input for the very first coordinate system one from line one to path curve. With a little updating to the curves, all the elements are moved over. If we boost up the ribbon width now to 300, you can now see it a bit easier. I'll also change the inner helix to the orange color we use for the outside one. I didn't quite like how narrow it tapered at the beginning, so it's an easy change to the walkway width curve settings. The final step for this bridge is to have somewhere to walk or ride. So let's create a deck. So dragging in a coordinate system, a line and a beast line surface, which I'll change the method to sweep rectangle along path. And I need a path, so we better drag in a beast line curve as node as well and change its method to by points. So let's link it up in reverse order. So it's a bit faster as we're building up this a deck or walkway. Linking up the beast line curve to the line 4 dot endpoint, this curve that can then be linked up to the path input on the beast line surface. And we can change the X and Y dimensions to the walkway width and then the other one to say 250 for the thickness. Let's change the line method over to by start point direction and length. We can link up the start to the coordinate system 4. The direction can be to the same coordinate system 4 dot Z direction and the length, let's set that to a variable. So let's say path offset equals 1600. Once that's been updated, we can then click on that input again and then put a minus in front of that. So it's minus path offset, which will then set that down below the center line. Finally, we need to link up the coordinate system first by changing its method to by number along curve. For this, we don't need a huge amount of points. So let's set that to 10. For the number along method, we can use parametric again. Let's open up the inputs and pin out the the up vector, setting it to the base CS.Z direction again. And finally, we can link up the curve input to that path curve. And now we have a deck, but it's in the wrong direction. So let's adjust and reverse those X and Y inputs for the B spine surface. Finally, we might just change the color of this surface over to colors.black. So doing a bit of tidying by turning off the visibility of the path curve and the other nodes, we have a nice double helix and a walkway. Now it's just a matter of adjusting the variables to create the desired rotations, radius, and walkway widths. You can even adjust the spacing of the helix along the path by adding a law curve to that as initial coordinate systems. Rather than using by points, you could use by distance along curve and then adjust that number by using the law curve. Hopefully you'll find a way to incorporate these concepts into your next project. Until next time, thanks for watching.